So hello and welcome to Flock Online. Today we are joined by Nick Torday, CEO and co-founder of Bauer Collective, a company that offers home and personal care products as a refill subscription service. Bauer is part of a great number of companies that are making it easier for consumers to reduce the amount of plastic coming into their home. Uh, founded in 2019, Bau serves over 45,000 customers in the UK and recently raised £2.1 million in seed stage funding. So Nick, hello. Thank you very much hello, for joining Ian. us. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. Um, it would be great to start with um, hearing from you how Bau actually kind of came about. You know, what was the eureka moment and yeah, what led to the idea? Sure. Um, so <clears throat> my background um, is in technology. And uh, so I worked in digital and tech for my entire career, the last 20 years. And um, latterly, pre-Bauer, was running a tech consultancy business um, here in the UK. And our clients were um, primarily, but not exclusively, social and environmental impact organizations. So people like the UN uh, were a big client of ours, Amnesty International, WWF, um, et cetera, you know, sort of marquee name, um, not-for-profits and NGOs. And <clears throat> we did a campaign um, with one NGO about, gosh, it must be about seven years ago now, six years ago, let's say, um, around marine plastic waste. So way before it was like a, um, a kind of big deal in the public consciousness that it, that it rightly is today. And, uh, and this sort of lit a fire in me because we, we built, we actually built this sort of data map of what are now known as the sort of Great Pacific garbage patches and all that. But at that point it was sort of, we were just, just beginning to understand the impact. Uh, so it lit a fire in me about lit, trying to live, you know, try, how, what could I do as an individual, as a consumer? Um, you know, I've got a family, I've got three kids. How could we live our lives differently, consume products differently to reduce our own impact? And, and, and in doing so, like, I discovered a number of things. One, that it was kind of quite a fragmented ecosystem for the consumer. Two, that the, the sort of product experience wasn't great. And three, that the sort of physical experience of like zero waste refill stores and, and, and all that, you know, there were sort of some compromises around that. So that just began a thought process to, you know, it feels like there's a big opportunity to create a really impactful transformational business that gives consumers another way of interacting with products. That, that eliminates waste coming out of their home. So that's long and short of it, kind of the sort of um, the embryonic stages of Bauer. And then I, I, I approached my, an old mate of mine, Marcus, who's a co-founder and Marcus's background is in bio packaging, biodegradable packaging. So he ran one of the country's first sort of um, compostable packaging businesses, which, which he'd sold and he was looking for his next challenge. So we came together and explored the whole space. And long story short, Bauer, that's how Bauer was, came, came into being. And, and, you know, we, we share a passion for purpose-driven, sustainable business, basically. So, yeah, that's how we are. That's how we came to where we are today. Okay. Um, and, and you have actually, you know, packed in quite a bit just to, into a, a few years. Um, but, you know, what, what's been the hardest part of, you know, getting to where you are today? What's been the, the biggest sort of challenge? Um, the hardest thing. Um, I think is, is convincing, you know, raising, raising capital is, is quite challenging. And we are, you know, we're a venture backed sort of high growth um, business. We have some fantastic investors. Um, and uh, raising investment is always challenging. So I think it's not so much the actual fundraising side of it, but it's, it's having real clarity around the vision for Bauer and communicating that vision in a really cogent and compelling way and, and staying true to it. Um, so I think that um, has been, has been is, is always a, a positive constructive challenge that we're always responding to is, you know, how big is our vision? How transformative can this business be? And how can we communicate that in a really 
effective way to the people that, that we need to, not just our investors, but also our, our customers, right? Because it's a very competitive space and you know, Bauer has, has made fantastic um, inroads, but it's, you know, there's a lot going on in, in not just the sustainable market, but the, um, you know, home personal care generally. So th those are always challenges. They're not unique to us in any way. And I think the, the thing that also not unique to us was we launched two months before a global, the global pandemic hit, and um, which actually in many ways was a very positive experience for us on a business level because a lot of people were shopping online more and thinking about their choices, but also um, from a supply system point of view was, was really tough. And um, we, had to, we had to fight tooth and nail just to sort of keep the show on the road throughout that period. Uh, and it's still actually, the disruption is still ongoing today for, for, for many businesses in terms of global supply. So yeah, those are kind of the key things I think I would, I would think about. Okay. Um, Bow's currently uh, sort of B Corp uh, pending in terms of, of status. And hopefully that's confirmed soon. Um, hopefully next week. Fingers hopefully next crossed. week. I don't know if yeah. anyone from B Corp is <laughs> tuning in. <laughs> that, um, yeah, be, it's been be great. It's, yeah, yeah, go on, carry on. No, it's okay. Um, I was just basically interested to know, you know, what in your view are the benefits to, to being a, a B Corp company? Um, I think we, we believe that the B Corp framework is a really good one. And um, it's huge in the States. And um, it is really picking up traction over here. And in fact, the reason it's taken us so long is because they've just got an enormous backlog uh, in terms of pipeline for them to review and certify. Um, so, I mean, we submitted, you know, nearly a year ago in December of last year. So um, it's a very rigorous process and uh, I've advised other startups um, around, you know, you don't take, it's not like a just a box ticking exercise, far from it. It's a really comprehensive, rigorous, process that really holds your feet to the fire as a business and uh, and we decided as founders that that was just that's what we wanted we wanted it to be really comprehensive um and it is and anyone else that's been through it will i think will will um, concur with that uh, and it covers off all the things that you really need to think about you know how your business interacts with the community within which it operates its governance, um, obviously all the environmental um, impact related metrics and very clear measurement and monitoring of that. Um, and, you know, the ethics and transparency within your supply system as well. So it covers off all the things that we take really seriously as a business. And it, you know, it's hard work. And, it, and I think that hard work is hard work for a reason, right? Because, you know, um, you can't cut corners. So, um, yeah, I, I, it's been a it's been a, a long and and not not an easy process, but hopefully within the next couple of weeks we will be fully certified, and um, and then we'll have standards that we have to consistently maintain and uphold as a business. And I think that's a really really good thing uh, for any any young business, particularly in our in our space, to um, to aspire to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of the perception of the you know B Corp and where you, you now starting to see the B Corp logo. Um, do you feel like it's, it's starting to gain more traction with the general public or is it still very much um, recognized by a sort of niche audience? It's a really good question. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's, it's having more penetration now, but I think it would still be a sort of more discerning consumer that would like know what it meant. So carrying B Corp, branding will would that does that sort of resonate with the with a really broad demographic probably not um but certainly for us where we are in our growth journey in terms of our early adopters i think a, a decent chunk of that audience would recognize that that is a quality creditation that means that we're a really like um you know responsible business uh, but no, it's a really good question, actually, Liam. I, I, I should probably ask them that in terms <laughs> of what, what penetration they think they have in um, consumer awareness. But uh, it's definitely a growing movement. And I think 
you know, we, we speak to massive business, you know, Unilever are now certified B Corp. That, that was not a straightforward process. So even the, the biggest FMCG businesses in the world are signing up to it. Natura, the Natura Group, who own Body Shop and ESOP, also certified B Corp. And I spoke to one of the senior leaders at, at ESOP about that process. And it was really like an enormous undertaking. So I do think it is being taken seriously at all levels of business, not just it's not just a sort of niche kind of startup thing to to um, to adhere to. Okay. Um, there's certainly seeing a lot of companies in the sustainable space um, are looking to to partnerships to either raise awareness or to sort of grow their business. Um, what sort of collaborations and, and partnerships do you Bauer, have in place? Partnerships are a really big channel for us. Um, and um, <clears throat> they've been, you know, a, a really, really successful part of our, our strategy. Um, so I think at a, at a sort of broad sort of brand partnership level, you know, there is a, um, there's a number of sort of channel activations you can run with partners. And then there's sort of bigger kind of more meaningful partnerships. So on the, on the long-term front, we have a, and this is not on the marketing side, this is on our sort of social environmental uh, responsibility side. We work with the Marine Conservation Society. So um, you've probably seen an awful lot of businesses saying for every purchase, we'll plant a tree. And the, the tree planting it has gone through the roof. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's great that people are aiming to plant lots of trees in the age of, of deforestation and the loss of carbon capture but we felt for us we wanted something a bit more focused than that so the marine conservation society we were introduced to and they um run a, a big program of protecting seagrass so seagrass is um you know grows in in sort of near shore coastal waters uh, and it is unbelievably efficient at carbon sequestration it's like and just it's a complete anchor for biodiversity generally um, and it's it's under threat, you know, largely from human activity. And so our, every time someone makes an order with Bauer, um, we protect uh, one square metre of, of seagrass in UK coastal waters. So we're part of a really proactive programme of, of protecting our sort of marine biodiversity to um, and increase carbon capture. So that's kind of one type of partnership. And then we have other partnerships on the, on the marketing side. Um, with a whole bunch of different brands and they tend to be very mission aligned. So we did a lot of activity earlier in the year with Ovo Energy, uh, the renewable energy business, um, which was really successful and really aligned with their kind of, you know, like for instance, we have a plastic waste calculator. They have a kind of um, household carbon calculator. So we sort of tied the two things together and had a really positive um, sort of product and service proposition to their, to their customers. And then a bunch of other um, brands that, that we've partnered with, you know, all again, our key criteria is there has to be a, a mission alignment between the two businesses. Unfortunately, there is a now growing cohort of interesting businesses, people like Ruby's in the Rubble that make amazing condiments out of food waste or um, BAM, which is a sustainable um, uh, fashion brand that we've, that we've done a few things successfully with. So that's just, you know, a couple. Tony's Chocolate Only, who's a bit of a <laughs> favourite of mine that we did a campaign with earlier this year, um, or well, definitely a favourite of my kids anyway. Um, so yeah, I think brand partnerships are, are phenomenal and you, you can activate them in different ways. So it can be around data capture or community growth or a pure play kind of acquisition um, uh, activity. Uh, uh, and um, yeah, we, we, we're leveraging them, um, I think, really effectively and and they and we always make sure they benefit both both brands equally in terms of um outcomes yeah very interesting and uh, very broad ranging i think in, in terms of the the types of companies a chocolate one definitely sounds good um so looking um you know again at, at your uh, subscription service and the, the kind of products that you, you offer and you know, we mentioned earlier there's the um, the, the home element and then the sort of the household products and cleaning side of things um, but you do also list branded products such as Life Cocoa and Truth uh, Truthbrush excuse me yeah. um, 
are you thinking about expanding the kind of categories that you're covering or you know what, what how is that sort of side of the business going so we have a sort of deliberate hybrid strategy so we have our own bauer um products that that that, that we manufacture so uh, and they tend to be our kind of liquid home and personal care refills but right from the outset one of the sort of founding hypotheses for bauer collective as well as the impact and waste side of it was when I told that, you know, that story at the beginning about when I started as a consumer, you have to have like seven different subscriptions. So you've got a subscription for your sustainable toilet paper, for your bamboo toothbrush, for your refill deodorant, for your blah, 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 et cetera. So before you know it, you've, you've, you've got sort of seven or eight of these subscriptions set up delivering household consumables. So Bauer is, you know, deliberately multi-category. We wanted it to to be like, you just come to Bauer Collective, we've got all of your household needs in one place. Um, Non-food, we don't do food, and that's very deliberate and primarily around the, the challenges around um, packaging waste in, in the food categories. So, um, yeah, so we do work with third-party brands that, that we really admire and that meet our, what's called the Bauer standard. So we have very clear criteria for, um, uh, efficacy for sustainability and for product quality that's our sort of triangle if you like products that look good and feel good that are highly effective and that fulfill all of our sort of clear sustainability criteria um, so we will you know we we like having that category cover our customers like having that category cover and having that choice so that they can get you know all of those you know those household consumables basically in one subscription model Okay. Um, and, you know, that, that sort of feeds in a bit into the next question in terms of, you know, what is the, the future for Bauer? There's the obvious kind of development, as you say, of the sort of product range, but is there anything else that you're sort of eyeing up as a, a good way to develop the, the business? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a few things. Um, uh, First and foremost is packaging innovation. So we, we're kind of leading the way in terms of um, reusable packaging. Um, we're just about to launch, hopefully at the beginning of December, fingers crossed, we're gonna be launching our next generation packaging. So, um, uh, I mean, what, technically what happens is we, we ship um, refill pouches to our customers and our customers empty those into dispensers, either Bauer dispensers they buy on our site or any dispenser they have in their home that they may already be using. Um, and then when the pouches are empty, they ship them back to us in a prepaid returns envelope and we reuse and recycle that packaging as required. So, but we're taking it to the next level with our next iteration, all of which will be, each pack will be, have a unique digital ID uh, and we'll have a QR code on the, on the pack which you scan and it gives you all the ingredients, how to use product information, but it also gives you all the sustainability criteria. So let's say, hi Liam, this uh, grapefruit washing up liquid pack has been reused four times. Uh, and in so doing, we've eliminated X amount of pla single use plastic waste um, from the chain. And we've also saved X amount of carbon because we've, we've done a life cycle analysis, which shows that the, um, with every cycle that we reuse our packaging, it has like a, a really significant exponential net positive effect on eliminating carbon from the supply system. It's much, much more carbon inefficient to just design plastic products to be used once and thrown away. Um, so packaging innovation is, is, is sort of a core part of our, our business and, and, and one of the USPs that people love about Bauer. So that, that's coming soon. Um, but I think, you know, the ambition is significant. We want to build a, a, a sort of, you know, um, pan-European, that's our target territory is, is Europe. Um, and we have, some, uh, we have some great investors in Germany who we're talking to at the moment about European expansion. So that is, um, that's probably the next sort of big um, step change for Bauer is consolidating our system and our growth and, and our sort of, offer for the UK market and then expanding into, into European markets where there's huge, huge demand and appetite for the kind of Bauer proposition that it isn't currently being realised. So 
yeah and we want to build a sort of you know we're we want to build a note like a significant business a try that you know the bigger the you know with with the b corp constitution in our articles the bigger the bigger the business we build the bigger the impact we create so it's a it's a it's a win-win and we're certainly very ambitious to to um to achieve our goals brilliant gosh well exciting times ahead by the sounds of things but busy as well um yeah i, th I think just uh, finally for for people tuned in who are right at the start of their journey in terms of building their sustainable business uh, or building their ethical brand. Um, what three bits of advice, key bits of advice could you offer uh, for someone who's starting out? Um, three sort of top tips. I think number one would be be really clear about what your purpose is. And if your purpose is like, uh, building AI tech that's going to, um, you know, help reduce some sort of niche impact, but could have incredible scale. And you're really deeply passionate about it, then that's cool. And if it's, you know, it, it can be whatever it is. It doesn't have to be sort of um, social and environmental impact impact related. It, you know, you can find your purpose in a number of ways. But I think if you're true to that purpose, even if it's, you know, just wanting to make a stack load of money. Uh, and, and executing that through whatever whatever the proposition is that you created, if you're if you are really true to that, um, it was just a great bit of advice I got a few years ago. Was you know, if you're really true to the thing that you are trying to create and it, it it's authentic, it gives you the best possible chance of success because that translates to um, whoever's interacting with the product or service, with the customer, the client. It translates to investors, it translates to your peers. People just get that it's the real deal. And I think, um, you know, we live in an age now of like, there's quite a lot of sort of artifice and it's quite easy to sort of smoke and mirrors stuff. Um, and, um, you know, I think people are, are, are alive to that now. So be really sort of clear about your purpose. Um, number two would be, um you know make sure you've got uh, a great kind of team around you so even if it's just you on your own with one advisor or you and a friend or a, a initial business partner i just think it's 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 hard starting a new business and i have to say having run a business prior to this a technology business technically on my own i wasn't on my own i was surrounded by a fantastic um team but technically you're is the 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 de facto sort of leader or whatever you are kind of it can be quite lonely i found launching a business with someone else um is uh, terrifically like valuable just in terms of the support and the energy that you can generate together so i think finding the right person that initial kind of founding alliance team partnership whatever it looks like is so important and you know i'm very fortunate to to um, you know, have a co-founder that, that I do who, you know, we are old friends, but actually, you know, we work together tremendously effectively and um, it's a really, a really healthy dynamic. Um, and number three, just get out there and get in amongst it. I think that, you know, um, uh, I think it's really difficult in today's world, particularly if you're in a job. And you've got a great idea and you're like, oh, I really wish I had time to like look into this and explore this thing. Take that. If you really believe in it, take that leap of faith and create the space. Uh, you know, I'd never done that in my career. I just worked continuously through for how many years it was from one thing to the next. And I was fortunate enough when I left my last business to be able to take a bit of a breather and go and explore and go and meet the people innovating in this in this space in the sort of circular economy space um, and really deep dive into it and learn about it and think about what the opportunities and challenges might be so yeah get out there get in amongst it that would be tip number three um, so i hope they that sort of that combination is is useful as a sort of how one how one might get started um I think that's incredibly useful. Uh, purpose, team, and creating the space, basically. 
um, all very sensible and useful. Um, well, Nick, it's been really, really interesting. Um, I've enjoyed the chat very much and thank you for sharing some insights. Uh, I think if anybody who doesn't know Bauer Collective or hasn't been to their site, uh, bauercollective.com, uh, subscriptions are still available as our, uh, <laughs> yeah, as our, as our gift cards for Christmas. So um, that's just a, an idea. Uh, thank you again for, for joining us and um, yeah, all the best with the business. Liam, thank you very much. It's been, uh, it's been great having a chat with you. Much appreciated. Pleasure. All right. Cheers, Nick. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.